Hello and welcome to the One Spatial webinar. We'll just uh, wait a second just to see if anybody else joins as it's not quite 11 o'clock yet. Um, but then we'll begin on or about 11 o'clock. Okay, I can see we've had a, a few more people join, so that's good. So now we'll begin. So hello, hello and welcome to the One Spatial webinar. Today we'll be taking a look at what's new with GeoCortex workflow. I'm Harry Sterley, a GIS consultant at One Spatial. Hopefully you can see the presentation clearly at this stage, but if you are having any issues, then please feel free to type them in the questions box or the chat box, and we'll address these as necessary. As with all of our, our other webinars, the session is going to be recorded. So you receive an email with a link to the recording after the session is finished. Alternately, you can now visit our website to register and download all of our previous webinars as well. These cover the wide range of GeoCortex products and software that we offer, which includes GeoCortex, One Integrated Software, and FME as well, which we resell as off. At One Spatial, we're a software solutions provider and are considered to be a global expert in managing location and geospatial data. We have offices around the world, including here in the UK, the United States, Australia, France, Belgium, and Ireland. And across these territories, we work primarily in three key sectors. Those are government, utilities, and transport. And within these industry sectors, we offer software solutions, product licensing, training, and consultancy services, which does include the add-on of technology provided by our wealth of partners in order to ensure that we're able to deliver the highest quality of service to our customers, some of whom you can see examples of here. So looking specifically at our geocodic software solution, which I'll be talking about today, we've worked with VertiGIS, formerly Latitude Geographic, since 2011, when we started selling geocodics in the UK. And as you can see from this slide, during this period, we've worked with a wide variety of customers across a range of sectors, providing a multitude of different GIS solutions to suit our customers' needs. Geocortex offer a suite of products, which include mobile and web viewers, such as Geocortex Mobile and the HTML5 viewer, as well as capabilities that can be consumed within a viewer, which includes workflow, reporting, and printing. And finally, accessibility and management tools, such as access control and access. The capabilities offered enable you to build custom widgets to extend your web or mobile GIS without the need for coding. And using the SaaS versions of Geocortex's software ensures that your software is always up to date. And this allows VertiGIS to regularly deliver bug fixes and upgrades throughout the lifetime of their products. Today, I'll provide an insight into some of the new updates that have been added to the Geocortex workflow capability. So Geocortex workflow allows you to build and streamline complex business processes and operate more efficiently by automating your tasks. You can improve your end user success by displaying guided step-by-step -step interactions to help your users. Geocortex workflow is JavaScript enabled and can use ArcGIS Online for permission-based access anywhere workflow storage. It can be run in a number of different viewing platforms, which includes the HTML5 viewer for Geocortex Essentials, as well as the new web and mobile viewers and Esri's web app builder for ArcGIS. If you have never built a Geocortex workflow before, then this webinar will provide you with the tools you require to start building and running Geocortex workflows today. Likewise, if you have a lot of experience building workflows, then this webinar will confirm what you already know about how useful a tool Geocortex workflow can be and show you some of the newest and most performant features. In the last year, there have been a number of new releases of Geocortex workflow to add to and improve the usability of the capability. The sandbox, which is used to test workflows in development from the designer, has been updated to use the newest ArcGIS API for JavaScript, version 4.13. The forms now include collapsible sections, so that users can now expand and collapse sections of the form as necessary. There are improved suggestions in the designer to make workflow expressions and activities more user-friendly. And the designer now shows the activity ID in the breadcrumb and includes an activity description in the navigator which makes it easier for administrators 
to locate, acti locate specific activities in complex workflows. Tables are now supported as well. And many of the activities that accept a layer as an input now also accept tables as well. There's a scanner form element that can be included, which allows users to scan barcodes and QR codes in the GeoCodex viewer for HTML5 and Web App Builder. And in parallel, there have been continuous documentation updates throughout all of these new releases. And within these new releases to the workflow capability, many new activities have also been released throughout the year. So here's just a few examples. There's the activate form element, which is an activity that allows the user to click on the add button on the geometry picker or a file picker in the form elements. Then there's a cast activity, which casts a value to a specific type. This was previously available in Workflow 4 and now has been brought into Workflow 5 as well. There's the run application activity, which allows a user to run an application on the server side. Then there's the create file activity, which creates a file object from supplied content. There's a generate web map for report, which produces a map to be used by the run report activity. Then there's also a run print activity, which as the name suggests, runs a geocortex print that you have supplied. Then there's the set map. This selects a what, which map is current. So if you have a multi-map application such as geocortex web, for example, this would allow you to work with one map and then using the workflow, switch to another map mid workflow and then work from it from that point on. Then there's also the get table workflow. This gets the activity. This gets a table from the current map and then the return table can be used with any of the above activities that previously only had a layer input. And finally, we've got a complete form activity. This programmatically closes the current form using the specified result. So for today's demo, I'll be showing you some of the examples from Geocortex, the Geocortex workflow sample site that includes some of the new capabilities and activities that have been added to Geocortex workflow. So let's just start by taking a look at the sample site itself. You'll see that I met with an initial alert to welcome me to the site and confirm that this sample site is for workflows to be run in the HTML5 viewer. So if I just click OK to close that alert, we can then see quite helpfully that on the left hand side here, I'm also shown a number of new, a list of new activities that have been added in the newest release. One of which is the cast activity, which I highlighted earlier. If I double click the toolbar, I met with a wealth of workflow categories to organize the sample workflows into different sections. And if I just click through some of these tabs, we can see that this provides me with a wide collection of workflows to choose from. So we've got different workflow concepts here that can, includes display form workflows, for example. I've then got GIS, where I have different GIS workflow activities, feature attachments, where I can use the different attachment activities, error handling and logging, graphics layers, geopolitics essentials. You can see there are plenty of examples to choose from here. As an example for today, I'll start with the viewer tab. So I'll just choose that now, and I'll select the inject CSS workflow. As the alert explains, this workflow is going to inject a cascading style sheet into my HTML application. So when I click OK, you can then see that I'm shown a display form, which in this case has been colored in teal, as opposed to the default color. So let's take a look at how this actually works. If I go to the sample site knowledge base, I can choose the workflow that I've just tested so I can see how it's actually built in my Geocortex workflow designer. So I'll just do that now. And I'll just use Control F to search for CSS. And then I'll click on my workflow in order to open it. And click View Application to open it in the designer as well. I'll use my ArcGIS online identity to sign in. And then I'll just get a message to confirm this is not one of my own workflows, so I just need to open a copy of it instead. So I'll hit OK. And once opened, we can see that I've just got quite a simple workflow here with three different activities. So initially, we've got the alert that popped up, which explained what, the, what this workflow was actually doing in this case. And then here, we've got the inject CSS activity, which is actually the workflow that's doing 
or the activity that's doing the work in this case. So if I select this activity, I can just hover over the help button here. And we get a brief summary of the activity and what it actually does. And if I wanted more information, I could just select that here. I can then choose to expand the content box so we can see how it's actually being configured so that we know what's actually happening. So in this case, we can clearly see that the background color in this case was set to teal, which is why we saw that green color that had been added when I ran it a second ago. And obviously you could just add different styling here depending on your particular use case. And this could be a useful activity if you wanted to style forms or content differently for different applications depending on the use case. So you could easily add use CSS to tailor the user's experience relevant to the purpose of your application. So now let's jump back to the sample site and look at some more examples. I'll just close this workflow choosing leave because I don't need to save it because I didn't make any changes and then I'll close that as well. I click submit and then we just close that that initial workflow that I was testing. This time let's have a look at the workflow concepts tab, concepts tab. You can see that the last workflow in this bar is called workflow translation. Now in line with my previous reporting and printing workflows which you may have seen, Geocortex now supports internationalization where the text content of an application can be automatically translated depending on the language of the host application. So for example, if I just click workflow translation, we can see from the initial alert, this application can be run in German by adding the text and locale equals DE to the end of the URL. But first, let's just run it in English by hitting OK. I'll then be shown a prompt with a text display in the language that is used by my host application, as we can see here. So now that I've done that, I'll try adding and locale equals DE to the end of this URL and then rerun the workflow so we can see if the text has changed. I'll just refresh the page, allowing the workflow to start up again. Close that initial alert, double click, and then click my workflow translation and button again. So this time, if I hit OK, We'll see instead that the prompt has returned German because it's now detected that my host application is being run in German as opposed to English as previously. In the case of workflows, translation and localizations are configured by creating translation strings in a specified language through the info panel under translations in the workflow designer. Administrators can then use the at symbol to reference the translated content when actually building their workflows. So if I just open this workflow in the designer, let's have a look at that now. It just tells me I need to update my browser. I'll close that. We can see that we've simply got just two activities here. So I have my initial alert that we saw, which explains the translation process and the fact that we can use add locale equals in order to change the URL. And then we've also got the prompt. And this time we can see in the description and the default text of the, the default text of the prompt that I've got two tags which are referenced with the at symbol as mentioned previously. So if I just select info and then choose translations. We can see in this case that I've got those two default tags added here and in the text as well. So that if I was using these translations or these tags, as we saw, depending on which what the host application is, it would then decide to enter it in the different language depending on that particular host application. On this page, I could also choose to add further text strings as well. Now let's go back to the sample site again and look at another example. So I'll just return to my sample site, choose OK in order to close that, and I'll just remove and locale equals D so that we're back in the, the original host application. I'll close that initial alert. And this time, I'm just going to choose one of the new activities that's been added, which is hyperlinked from the left hand side. So I'll select cast geometry. Excuse me. We can see here that I'm initially met with a display form which explains the activity and it allows me to add a location on the map. So to do that, I'll just select the tool by clicking add location. And then I get a message to say select a point on the map. So I'll just click on the map as we can see here. And then when I click submit, we'll be shown a message to confirm the X and Y coordinate as well as the spatial reference of the point I've clicked. 
Now, what's happened here is that when I've clicked submit, my point has been automatically cast to an Esri point output type and then just confirmed with that final alert as we've seen. So if I click OK, and then we actually open this workflow in the designer, we can have a look at how that cast activity is working. So I'll just search for cast this time and then choose cast geometry. Choose view application, open a copy again, and then we can see the activity here. So we can see initially that I've got that display form, as we saw, where the user is actually able to click the button in order to add a location and also provides the explanation of the cast activity as well. And then after that, we've got the actual cast geometry activity. Again, I could find out some more information about it by selecting the help button, or I can just have a look at what the inputs and the outputs are. So in this case, the input that we have is actually the output of the geometry that's been added on the map by the user. And then we can see that there are a range of different outputs here, which includes the Esri point, which we saw in this example, but also includes polygons, polylines, and extents on multi point as well. So now let's jump back to the sample site to choose one final example. So I'll just close my workflow again, choosing to leave as I haven't made any changes. And then this time I'll open the top tab again. And this time we're just going to choose the display form elements. So we've got an autocomplete here, as we can see, and I'll just hit submit. Again, we just get an initial explanation of what it is. In this case, the autocomplete works by allowing a user to enter some of the characters of a particular state in order to then complete the state. So if I just type in flow, allow it a few seconds to work. And then of course we're shown Florida. And if I hit submit, we're then shown the object ID for this state as well, just as a confirmation that it's actually found the state that we're looking for. This is a pretty useful sample to demonstrate the different form elements we have available, of which there are many. I also get another option at the end, just to decide whether I want to run another form element or just close it. Now, let's have a look at this workflow in the workflow designer again, in order to understand some of the different activities and the different form elements that are available. So I'll just search this time for forms. And then I can select my display form element items workflow and hit view application. Again, I'll open a copy. And then we can see we've got the initial display form that allows me to choose which item I wanted to select. In our case, I chose also complete. And then we can see we've got a different container for all of the different form element items that are available here. And if I scroll down, we can see all the different options. So well as autocomplete, which is the one I used at the very top. As this workflow is quite busy, I can use the new navigation tools here that are available. So if I double click into display form, we can see that I now have the item ID included within the breadcrumb, which is pretty helpful. I can also use the navigator. So if I know that I want to explain or I want to change a particular activity within my workflow, but it's not what I've written myself, I can simply select this navigator and then see a different see a description of the different activities that are included. So in this case, perhaps I just want to make a change to the query that was used for this autocomplete. I could do that by opening the navigator, navigating to the autocomplete form, as we can see here, and then just double clicking on my query activity, and I'll automatically be navigated to that activity as we can see here, and I can make any changes as required. We can also see that it includes the description, which is written here, and then included in the description box of the activity itself. So if you're not already aware of the GeoCortex workflow sample site, as shown here, then hopefully this tech tip has given you a welcome introduction. It's a great place to start when beginning to write workflows, or even if you're just looking out for ideas of what workflows you might want to use in the future. And as I've shown today, there are plenty of examples to choose from in this workflow site. So today, I've shown you a mere fraction of how using GeoCortex workflow you can avoid writing code to build custom widgets. You can choose from a library of over 200 pre built activities that chain together to automate almost any tasks. And as I've shown, these are being continuously added to with new releases to Geo the Geocortex workflow capability. Geocortex workflow is continually updated to provide bug, fix bug fixes and improved capabilities, as well as ensuring support for the newest ArcGIS software. 
those new activities that have been frequently added, including at least 10 in the last year alone. And in the last year, a number of new updates have been made to the designer itself, such as the navigation tools, to make it more user-friendly and intuitive for an administrator or a designer. And as I have shown throughout this webinar, there have been multiple updates to the Geocortex workflow capability, which help to enhance its functionality and widen its usability. Thank you for listening. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask now or get in touch via email. Or for more information, please feel free to visit our website. Oh, I can see that we've had one question coming here. So um, can you build your own custom activities? Uh, yep. Yeah. So whilst there are there is a very large library of activities available, you can actually use JavaScript to build custom activities if you would like to. Uh, and there's actually a Geocortex Developer Center, which you can go to, uh, where you can access helpful information for how to develop your own content relating to Geocortex workflow. Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, do workflows work in non-geocortex environments? Um, so I would assume that means the viewers that you can use them, use them or run them in. Uh, so yeah, the simple answer or the short answer is yeah. So as I've shown, you can use them in the, the HTML5 viewer for geocortex essentials, uh, as well as geocortex's web and mobile viewers, but you can also use them in Esri's web app builder application as well, which is obviously a, a non-geocortex product. Okay. Thank you all for listening. I do hope this has been an interesting and informative webinar. Please join us next month to hear about how you can use Geocortex Analytics with your web GIS.